The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hi, I'm Rob McDonald. I'm with uh, BSF, a header agronomic excellence group. Uh, we're here in uh, Smoky, southern Alberta, near Strathmore. Uh, this canola field uh, was seeded nine days ago, and it's just coming out of the ground. So just a great time to have a look at our emergence. And uh, I get a chance to show you some uh, demonstration work we're doing with seed depth and the impact of seed depth. So. Uh, these first four rows that we're looking at here in the field, this is all direct seeded and uh, pretty dry conditions. Uh, we've only had a half an inch of rain uh, for the season here so far. Uh, this first four rows here right in front of me, uh, we've got some, some uh, establishment here, but you can see it's quite patchy. A group of seeds here, lots of uh, blank area. And if we, we, dig, we dig one up, we'll see that our seeding depth here was right around a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So pretty short. Uh, and the challenge here, if we look a little closer at the dirt, we can see there's a bit of seed on the surface. So our establishment right now at this half inch is probably somewhere around 20%. So not very effective. And uh, you know, our conditions weren't too bad at seeding. We we're probably just touching the moisture to not quite. And we had significant dry down, lots of hot, dry wind since we see it. So let's move over a couple more rows. And here we can see a pretty dramatic difference in the, in the establishment. So we've got really, uh, really nice establishment. You know, in four, four inches, we've got about, you know, as many as four plants. Our, our emergence here is probably closer to 70, 75% uh, seeded at Invigorate at 10 seeds per square foot. So we dig a plant up here to have a peak. And here we can see we're right at that inch to inch and a quarter. And that's uh, in this field, that was a sweet spot. Our moisture was right at about, about three quarters of an inch, but we don't target where the moisture is. We target below the moisture where we want to get below the moisture to protect that developing plant. Another reason to get below uh, that, you know, three quarters to one inch zone is we also want to get out of this residue because the residues, you know, really there's quite a bit of flax residue here uh, to at least three quarters of an inch. And this is a terrible seed, but the seeds desiccate very rapidly in there. We've got to get into the dirt. So that's really the goal with the, with the deeper seeding. Now we can move over a few more rows and we're getting a stand here as well. Uh, and you know, the plants come, you can see Colleen's a little bit smaller. It's a little more delayed. There's still plants just coming up. And if we dig one of these up, we can see, get a feel for how deep these ones are seeded. So we stretch this guy out two inches. So this coming up from two inches. So that's where we actually targeted was two inch seeding depth deeper than I certainly ever like to seed, uh, you know, but we benefit here from warm soils at seeding, I think it was eight degrees Celsius and down at two inches, believe it or not, um, when we seed it. And uh, so we are getting plants out, but we'll lose stand here. And we're probably took another two days uh, for the plants to emerge uh, from that depth. So do you like, do we like seeding at two inches? No, we want to avoid it. And that's why I like to seed, you know, get the seed in that inch, inch and a quarter range. And, and how do producers actually determine what's best for their field when it comes to seeding depth? Well, there, there's a lot of factors to, to consider. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, uh, moisture is number one. There's no point in putting the seed in the dry soil and hoping it's going to rain. Hope's not a strategy. So a good strategy is to get below the moisture, as I mentioned, one quarter inch, minimum one quarter inch below that moisture layer to protect it. Because you don't want to just germinate the seed because, you know, you can germinate the seed, the radical comes poking out, and then if the soil dries down below that, it'll desiccate really rapidly. They're quite susceptible after they just germinate. So we need to protect them and get them in, get them in, get them in the ground. But, uh, uh, you know, another important strategy is control uh, the depth with your drill as best as possible. And 
I mean that not just uh, by setting the drill, but leveling the drill, making sure it's in good working order so that we minimize the amount of variance. Because you can see the difference it makes seating depth has on overall emergence. So we just want to tighten that up as much as possible. We'll actually go have a look at uh, uh, some emergence in, in this field here and show you what, what good looks like in terms of uh, seeding. What, what are you really trying to achieve? Well, there's a few things we want to achieve uh, through our seeding operation. Uh, one, we really want to get as uniform an emergence as possible. That just helps with the staging and consistency of the crop throughout the year. So what does that look like in terms of good? Well, if we have a look at this row here, uh, we can look all the way down, down the row here and we can see that pretty much every plant is similar in size uh, this all probably emerged within the same day. Uh, there's no one leaf canola. It's all cotyledon canola. Probably ready to throw it its first leaf. Probably, in, probably it's going to take a couple days uh, in this smoke uh, for it to move along quick enough to throw it the first leaf. But this, we want a really nice uniform uh, stand like this. It's a really gorgeous stand. We've got probably 75 percent uh, emergence here, which is great. And uh, so we're right in the wheelhouse of getting that five to seven plants. Here we have a solid seven plants uh, per foot. Um, we've been out of the ground here for two days now on, on this site. The great news is we don't see any flea beetles yet. And uh, we've been, uh, been watching it close the last couple of days. Really worried about the beetles this year, but so far uh, this field's pretty clean. Now we've moved up to a higher seed rate. Here we're seeding 15 seeds per square foot. And while looking down the road, it's pretty exciting. You see a lot of green and you think you've got a great catch here. But actually, we're a little too successful. In this uh, foot of, uh, of row space here, we got about 11 plants. And 11 plants is simply, it's too many. You, you look at the spacing between these plants, you know, there isn't even a half an inch between some of these plants here. And what happens when you get that high a density of plants is they'll actually compete with one another. And, uh, uh, and we'll see mortality between the plants and as they fight for light, space, and nutrients. So we don't want the canola to be that dense because canola is a pretty aggressive growing plant. It likes to branch and likes to put out a decent uh, stock as well, which helps with the standability. So when you get them in this packed in this tight, while it looks attractive early in the spring, it doesn't represent an ideal population. That's why we really like to see the five to seven plants for overall success. Every grower's got to decide on their specific conditions in the field, you know, what their ideal seeding rate is. But what they want to really keep in mind when choosing their seeding rate is what target they have for population. And uh, our the research that we've done over the years has really shown that targeting five to seven plants per square foot is really ideal for uh, for canola. So if we look at this particular row right here, we uh, look in close here, I've got about a foot laid out here, and we've got three to four plants uh, emerged in this uh, in this foot. And we had excellent emergence in, in this field. This is all seeded, the seeded inch and a quarter, really excellent emergence. And this was seeded at five seeds per square foot. So we got four plants uh, out of five. So that's pretty good. That's 80% emergence. That's awesome. But four plants is just a bit on the low end. If we lose a plant to, to flea beetles, for example, now we're down to three and we know we get down to three plants, we're probably going to lose 20% of our yield. And that's a big risk to take. Uh, to seed, say, a half, a half seed rate at five plants per square foot, you know, you can bring it to a crop, you can get it, you know, you can get a decent yield, but it's not going to be optimum. And wow, you got to protect those plants uh, and baby them to, to get them through. So it doesn't give you the safety margin that really would be ideal uh, going into the season. You only get one chance to, to see. It also, uh, flea beetles uh, always hop behind this time of year. Uh, one thing we really saw last year was how our lower population stands really got impacted by flea beetles because it's just a numbers game. There's so many flea beetles in the field and there's so many plants. So if you have less plants, that's more flea beetles per plant. So that's more pressure on them. So when you get these big infestations, it's actually an advantage to have more plants simply because there's more for them to feed on. So, uh, you know, bottom line is uh, uh, you got to maintain your population.